Welcome back to another episode of God Hawk. Today I'm speaking with Pete Fry. He's the goalie mindset guy, and he's going to help you take your game to the next level. Let's get to it. All right, so here we are back for another God Hockey. This is episode 12, and today I'm talking to my good pal, Pete Fry. He is the goalie mindset guru, if you want to if we want to add a title to the name. And today we're going to talk a little bit about goalie mindset. But first, Pete, let's just talk a little bit about goalies. You're a goalie yourself. How did you find yourself uh, in the position, as it were? I don't know. I found myself playing goal. That's going back a long way. I'm (laughs) from Ontario originally, right? My parents were from uh, Kleinberg in in Ontario. And and, uh, I think they registered me in hockey when I was seven years old. There was uh, Rexdale Ramparts, it was called, called. And I remember my first year playing goal, I was, I was actually pretty good. I think my, my goals against average, I, I still remember it was like 0.81 or something like that. 0.81. Something. It was really, That's anyways, not bad, Pete. Yeah. I was all downhill after that. So <laughs> I I that again. <laughs> anyways, I think at that age, all you had to do was lay, lay down and you can stop the puck. Right. Yeah. As long as you, and if, if the paddle down was huge, you know, back in the early years, because that's, it, it, that was just like, it's like putting the two by four in front of the, you know, the pucks weren't coming off the ground as much when you, when you're little. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, I'm just glad that when I played, I, uh, I, I missed the, the stage where goalies never wore a mask and I missed the stage where they wore like the, the flat mask as opposed to the cage. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 The full facers. Yeah, the full facers, that could have been a little painful as well, too. Yeah, exactly. Well, you still made it into the era where we were wearing the quilted arm rings and the sort of uh, baseball uh, catcher style belly pads. I remember those in my first few years. And my mom always used to say to me, did so- who did someone grab you? Did your teacher grab you at school? And I had no clue that there was bruises from hockey because I didn't realize it at the time. You're just playing and you just get hit with the you just get hit with the puck. Oh, it was, yeah, it was, it was just part of it is you had to, you had to love a little bit of pain to be a goalie back then. Exactly. Exactly. So now you find yourself uh, in the, in the coach's world and uh, but focusing not as much on the on ice, but the off ice uh, it's all about mindset. It's all about approaching it uh, in a mindful way and maybe Maybe if, if we can look at it from, from that angle, what do you think some of the things that a conventional on-ice goalie coach maybe misses out, maybe where you come in and sort of how you fill the gaps? Well, I would say like there, there's a lot of great, there's a lot of great on-ice coaches out there nowadays, yeah. a lot of really good ones. Really, and and I, I think the whole technical part of goalie, of being a goalie from a coaching perspective has evolved so much. And there's a lot of really good, really good coaches. You mm-hmm. can almost find a, a good technical goalie coach in almost every city you go to. Yeah. So, and, and if you're, if, if you can't, then you can probably look online and find something online or some YouTube and stuff like that. So what, what, what I bring to the table is no matter how good someone is technically. Yeah. If, if you're in goal and you're not confident or you're doubting yourself. Like you can be as con- there's a difference between competent and confidence. Mm-hmm. You can be super competent and not have a good performance because you're not confident. And so that that's what I would say that I really bring to the table. And the reason why I've chosen that to be a focus, because I used to teach goalies technically. Mm-hmm. I, used to, I used to work on the technical part of the game. And I thought, you know, this is really missing. The whole mindset is really missing. And I look back to what, to what I played and, and not just the mental part as far as when you play a game or when you're in practice, but also the whole mental part as far as your goalie career goes. Yeah. Nowadays, I believe there is so much opportunity out there for goalies. It, it's like almost any goalie who wants to be a pro can be a pro somewhere at some point if they work on their technical game they 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 get good enough there as far as that goes if they they work on their 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 
physical, as far as their strength, their conditioning, maybe they're working with Maria Mountain. She's really, really good. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if they work on the mental part of the game, is, and I think I'm the guy for the mental part of the game. There's some other good people out there as well, too. And I yeah. just think I, I bring more to the table. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it, it all starts with, it all starts with even simple things like the language we use. I know you and I, I know I, I saw something that you had had written about and a little video that you had made about, about a question that someone had asked basically saying like, you know, why do we say that the goalie let it in? Because yeah. none of us are trying to let the, we're not playing, uh, we're not playing Matador with the puck here. So so maybe if maybe if I can, I can get you to sort of uh, have another go at that and 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 sort of explain how that fits in uh, as part of part of what we're talking about. So 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 basically, every word that is said forms an image in your head, mm -hmm. and the images in your head are either helping you create excitement, moving towards something, feeling confident in yourself, or the images in your head are doing the opposite, right. making you have anxiety, making you, you know, feel like you're not going to stop the puck as opposed to stop the puck. And there's, even if you, if you go, if you take it, if you go away from goaltenders and you go to, you go to rock stars, right? You compare to two rock stars, there's Bruce Springsteen and there is, oh, what's the other one's name? Anyways, it, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. I need that yes. picture in my head. I remember the name, but Bruce Springsteen, before he goes on stage, he like gets these, these feelings of almost nervousness, so to speak. And then he just gets fired up. And, and if you were to ask him, he's like, it's the best feeling ever. I right. know that I'm a rocket out there. The other one that I was thinking of was Carly Simon. Now, a lot of people maybe not have heard of Carly Simon. Some have but she's not as big as Bruce Springsteen. One of the reasons, one of the reasons is before she goes out on stage, similar type of feeling, similar type of energy, but different pictures. So the pictures in her head are her, her having anxiety on stage, her not being able to right. perform. And so the same energy, different pictures in the head and a different outcome because of that. And right. that's why I stress that's so much for goaltenders, because if you just continue to say, you know, if a goalie continues to say, or coaches can you just say, you know, don't get scored on, uh, don't let that in. It's just all, all it does is raise anxiety. That, that's mm. all it does for the goaltender, as opposed to stop the puck, make the save. Right. So what we're doing is we're taking away the don't do the bad thing. We're, we're concentrating on the right things we're concentrating on the positive things that we're trying to accomplish. We're focusing on um, getting there, getting to where we want to be, not um, sort of failing to do what we're trying to do. We're working on, we're working towards those things. We're working to the positives rather than the negatives. Yeah. A hundred percent. Right. And mm -hmm. so I saw a couple of comments from a couple of parents and, Oh, that just means they're weak or, something like that, if they can't put up with those words and stuff. And it doesn't mean that at all. It's just, yeah. what result do you want? Are you using the correct language to help you get that result as opposed to hinder getting the result that you want there? Yeah, ex exactly. And, and, and again, it, it, it simply goes back to everything. It goes back to the mindset. It goes back to, um, you know, being, being and becoming the goalie that you want to be and, and, and ending up or, or moving toward the goalie that you want to be or to the place where you want to get to. Yeah. Um, so we obviously, I mean, there's this COVID year, so like, you know, I'm in Ontario. There was no, there was no kids hockey uh, last whole year. There was obviously a little bit of training going on. And I think there were some like sort of, sort of like secret tournaments that were happening and, in places, uh, in places across the province. But, but generally I think for the most part, we really, we weren't on the ice. So if you're, if you're still doing your mental training, if you're still doing your visualizations, if you're still able to keep that part of the game training, are you, 
do you think you're going to find, and I, I would imagine it would be the case um, that we're going to find that the goalies who have that type of a background in focus and in mindset training are probably going to be the ones who come out a little bit ahead of maybe some of the ones who, who don't really have a similar focus in that regard. Yeah. You're going to see the difference of the results uh, on the ice and st- study of has shown like science has shown studies have shown uh, a good example is the, the basketball study where they studied, they, they took three groups of basketball players and they, they said to the first one, you are going to practice every day. You're going to do free throws every day for the next 30 days. You're going to practice them. The other one, they said, you got to pretend you have COVID basically, or you're in a COVID culture and you can't, you can't go out there on the court. You got to stay home, but we want you to visualize every day for 30 days. Visualize getting those baskets in perfectly. At the end of the 30 days, they retested them. And the ones that practiced every day improved 24%. The ones that just visualized every day improved 23%. <laughs> no touching a ball. Right. Touching a basketball. And, and, and I, I tell people to just go do an experiment yourself. Go like, like visualize getting that basket in. See it, see it, see it, see it, see it. And then throw it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Chances are you're going to have good success, even if your even if your technique is not very good at all. Even if your technique is not very very good at all. But what happens? Then someone starts off and they throw and they miss, and now that's the image that sticks with them. Yeah. And so when, a lot of times that image is still there, and that's still fuzzing their mind when they go to shoot the next one. The miss becomes okay. halfway to the next miss. Yeah, essentially is what you mean is what you mean. I know the, the visualization, I know like you, that's part of your program that you have when the goalies, when they, when they log into their, to do their, their daily routines, their daily exercises. And I've often, um, I, I use the word that you use, which is powerful. And I, I always talk about your oration when you, when you do those and how the voice in your head and how it how it comes across and that's again another just another segment of it where you it's it's inspiring you 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 have that you just sort of you close the eyes and you're you're right there in the net and you have that you have that feeling and and it all just keeps it all keeps you going it all keeps you moving and it and it's like i said it's a real sort of a motivating thing but but it 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 must take a little bit i guess to develop that but I know again, that's another that's another one of the keys. Do you want to talk about a, a little uh, a little bit of those? Yeah. Yeah, I I, I just actually did did uh, one for an Olympic team yesterday, like or uh-huh. a team trying to qualify for the Olympics, a hockey team trying to qualify for the Olympics. So, you know, their their coaches felt that they might have been you know doubting themselves a, a little bit, and so uh, helped them get that clear picture, that clear picture of being successful, of winning the game, of celebrating at the end of the game. And just to help build that belief level up. I do that with a lot of goalies, a lot of pro goalies through before the puck is dropped. They have a pre face off routine where they're firing off anchors so that they're at their ultimate hype level, like excitement level, so that they're all at their ultimate confidence level, a 10 or a 10 in confidence. And so that they're simply dialed in on the puck and the play and nothing else. And that's a separate subject. We can talk about that a little bit more. And so at the end of the visualizations, what I do is I'll do some affirmations with them and then I'll use a power, I'll use a word like power. So as they're coming up, I take them like up the elevator and people that are listening, they're going, what is he talking about? An elevator yeah. We're talking about goaltending, but this is, this is just this part of like the system of how I, how I do it. So, so in their mind, um, they're like floor one, you are born to stop the puck power. Floor two, you feel like you can stop every puck. Power. Floor three, other coaches want you to be their goalie. Power. Floor four, you are born to dominate the leagues where only the best play. Power. So, so basically, that's just a yeah. little, a little taste. Uh, I, I'm doing that. And then so that later on, if they need that same feeling, because mm-hmm. when you hear that, you're like, wow, I can stop anything. Right. <laughs> 
And so if they need that feeling again, they'll associate the word power with that. So when they're on the ice, they can say power. I tell them, you know, if you need to bring this feeling back, simply say or think the word power and move powerfully and you'll get that same feeling back. Yeah, I know. I'm look, I'm inspired right now. I could stop. I could stop a hundred breakaways right now, line them all up. Connor McDavid, Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, Carol Kaprizov, Alex Ovechkin. I'm stop. I'll stop them all with my bad knee and all. Still not quite ready it. to get back on the ice, but I think right now I could do it, Pete. I think right now. Well, I, you know what? And a big part of it is mental. It's a large part of it. Like, you know, it's it's uh it's 70 percent uh what is it 70 percent physical and 80 percent mental. So I don't there know you go. That, that equals out to you, right? Or they say they say uh, they say goaltending is uh it's uh, it's 50 percent of your team if you have it and it's 90 percent of your team if you don't have it so mm-hmm. you know that's uh all those all those old goalie uh, all those uh, old old goalie cliches um so maybe i guess when we look at your your type of training and the types of training that that coaches i guess like you do i mean that's becoming more accepted i guess you would say more more on the forefront just just in general those types of you hear you know you sort of hear about the sports psychology aspect of things and that's becoming more prevalent are there do you like do you still run into parents or or maybe other coaches like head coaches and things like that 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 still really don't get these aspects of of how to how to improve your game through through something that doesn't involve shooting a puck at somebody yeah 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 totally 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 i uh yeah went, once in a while you get the uh, coach they'll say all oh, that stuff is garbage or something like that right yeah. it's really old school but then uh you'll hear them on the bench and you'll be like oh man i feel bad for feel bad for those players um there's there's some people that are you know there's some some people out there that still still tell me tell goalies that they need to stand up all the time. They can't yeah. go down on the that's the three things my dad used to scream from the uh from the stands. It's stand up, come out, and keep your stick on the ice. I think that was about all the goalie coaching I had for the six first six years I played. You know, <laughs> that's, that's, people really gotta change with the times, right? Like they really gotta yeah. change. I can remember when I was 17, my second year in the Western Hockey League, and and this is my draft year, and I went from like when I was 16. I was ranked like really high to get drafted the next year. And then as a 17 year old, I just tanked. And if I look back, it was mental. It was almost purely mental. And one, uh, we're getting, we're getting ready to, uh, was it in between periods? I think it was in between periods. And the general manager, right? He had this big ego on our team he comes in the dressing room and he's like, yeah, the scout for, for Hartford Whalers. It's called Hartford Whalers at the time, right? Yeah. Neil, he's watching you. He's watching you. He says, you know what? Um, he says, you go down way too much. Your, uh, your legs are too far apart and uh, you're holding your hands too low. You got to keep them up, up way higher. Right. And I'm thinking, Oh man, okay, this but, guy thinks he's scouting Terry Sawchuk. Yeah. Well, well, and, and that, that was the challenge a lot, you know, I to, and, and he, he was a really good person from what I like. Uh, Emil France was a really good person, all that stuff, but you know, he had played earlier on, you know, right. Like right. 40s, I think, or something like that, forties or fifties. Anyways, so the next practice, the coach of our team basically gets my skates. I used to like them really sharp. So he takes, he gets a stone and he flattens them out. So, oh. they're, so they're flat. So it's like, I'm doing the Bambi out there, so to speak, right? The skates yeah. are flat. And then after he flattens the skates, he gets a skate lathe and ties it around my pad. So I could open my legs about two inches, oh. right? That was about it. And then uh, he put a knob on my goalie stick about six inches or eight inches above the shoulders. That's <laughs> okay. what I right. I was, it, anyways, it was, uh, the, anyway. So the reason I said that I yeah. don't digress was, was because they hadn't changed with the times. Yeah. Right. And sometimes you just, you just got to let people play their game and learning and develop and get better and, and you know show them the the, the newer techniques uh, that are yeah. up there like and it's so much easier to be a goalie now as far as like how when you learn the position and you play it there, there, there's right. so much good technical training out there that uh, you could basically take a 
good 15 year old from now and I swear put him in the National Hockey League back in the in the 70s and this is not a knock against the, the goalies the people right in the right 70s. right it shows how much the position has evolved and I bet that that 15 year old could dominate you, you take away the fear of a 15 year old of being course. in the National Hockey League take that away but you, you put that in there and I, I bet they were dominate yeah well that's that's the thing I, I think I think so much emphasis is on coaching and preparation and all of those things. It's so much different than, so, I mean, for you, I mean, you're talking early eighties, right? When you played in the WHL. Mid eighties. Mid eighties. Pardon me. Pardon me. 83 was my first year when I was 16 and right. Five years till I was uh, 20 years old there. Okay. Well, so there you go then. And, and even then, I mean, even, to have a dedicated goalie coach in your community was, would have been nearly unheard of. I know like when I was, you know, when I would have been, you know, say at the same time that you were, you were playing, that was more or less when I was starting playing and, and there was really no, no such thing as a goalie coach. You just, you put a kid in net and you just hope he knew what to do. It so happened that I, I wanted to be a goalie that bad. And it wasn't until you know, into the nineties that I actually had time with a goalie coach who actually said, these are the things you can work on. These are, these are even, even just proper stretching other than, you know, one leg out, one leg out, do the splits, you know, other than even just things like that. And, and, and it it makes you wonder how these guys all get so good now. Like, you know, like you, you see the way they play now and just the emphasis that's on that, that just, it never really existed back in, in our sort of previous generations and, and the, the way you, even now, if I play, if I play a game and I'm playing against guys in their early mid twenties, whatever it happens to be, I mean, sure. Like they have always have the youth on their side and they can skate forever, but the amount of time that they've spent working on the game is so much greater than what I did that they're just, they're all great players, even if they didn't necessarily play, at a at a at a very high level you know and and that's just it's just that's that's why hockey is so great today and you see the the skill just it just it comes right to the forefront and at every position really it's phenomenal today oh yeah yeah 100 percent. so i can see i see the images behind you uh this is i see uh two things in particular that stand out goalie practice mastery and goalie game mastery Um, maybe we can get into a little bit about each of those and why those are, uh, why those are different from each other and and how one helps the other. Yeah, for sure. So, so those are actually journals that people can buy on, on Amazon to, you know, to to prep for their Mm -hmm. practice. So they get a better performance. And we'll put the links in the, in the description for everybody who wants to check it out. You bet to prep for their performance, uh, to recap after their performance. So they, they, they apply what's called, we talked about the 23% rule. They apply that out before their practice and after their practice. Same thing with their games as well, too. Now, with those journals, they're also part of what's called the, the, the Goalie Mindset Academy. And with the Goalie Mindset Academy, they get that online with a whole bunch of other stuff as well, too. Mm-hmm. And then the book you see up there, that's Goalie Mindset Secrets. That, 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 that's my book. It's a good read. It's a really, really good reader. There's the audio book uh, as well. And uh, then there's the program, Goalie Mindset Power, which is a 30 day program for goalies, which is a lot of pros have done that program, it, but a lot of 10 and 11 and 12 year olds have done it as well too. And, and I really yeah. like that program because not only does it cover things for a game, but also a goalie career, like, like things like how to deal with a negative coach, stuff right. like that. Cause if you had, and this is not a knock against coaches, most of coaches course. are, phenomenal. but if you haven't had a negative coach yet, you will. And it may not be that the coach is negative. It just could be, he has a bad day and he says a couple things and they stick with you mm-hmm. uh, as well too. Right. And that you, you hear that a lot. You hear that. A lot. I, I have pros that will talk to me about that. You know, how do I deal with that? This guy said this. So every time I see him, that's all I think of and stuff like that. And it's uh, you know, that's where a lot, sometimes those, that's where some of those mental health issues start. Right. And I think that might be one, one important thing that I, I kind of picked up on right away when I, when I started looking at your program and, and even the, the, the times I've jumped on calls with, with, with you and with your students, and uh, I've always enjoyed those. But one of the things that jumped out 
to me early on was, you know, this isn't just about hockey. Now, this isn't just about being a goalie and, and making saves. Like you, you, like you say, um, this, can, this can help you deal with maybe that negative coach. But in a few years for these kids, this can help you navigate the waters of, you know, the, the negative teacher or the negative boss or the negative girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it happens to be. This, 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 doesn't just, this doesn't just apply to the sport of hockey or shooting free throws or, or anything like that. These are all tools that you can, you can save away for later on in life that, that won't even necessarily, like I said, you know, translate to, you know, uh, making a glove save or, uh, or uh, keeping a rebound close to you. hundred percent. Yeah. And, and to me, these are skills that are going to carry over into everything you do, right? If what you do after hockey, the whole, you know, there's a, there's a lot of mental health issues out there. There's a lot of depression out there and, and things like that. And, but I always, like, I always look at it like, I always look at first, okay, well, what has been done proactively? Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is it's like, you know, you look at someone who let's say they're out of shape, right? They're, yeah. they're not in very good shape. Um, what has been done proactively? Are you on an exercise program? Are you eating well? Mm -hmm. So for example, for, for, for mental health, someone is super depressed. Well, what has been done, what has been done pro and some people go, oh, what a jerk for saying that, but really what has been done proactively? Do yeah. they get up in the morning? Are they staying in front of the mirror smiling for five minutes? Mm -hmm. Right. Doing that alone. Because there, there are things that, yeah, not, not for everybody. Of course, everybody's different, but, but you're right. There are things you can do like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are they doing affirmations? Are they, are they asking positive questions to themselves or are there, is there, a, is there software in their head so bad that it's asking them negative questions all the time, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that can be changed with consistent work. And that's a lot of what my program is about for, for goaltenders, just so that they feel totally confident so that they feel like they can stop every puck. They feel like they can make every save. It's basically about putting a new software in their brain, so to speak. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. It, and again, like I said, it's excellent. It was the, the first thing that jumped out was how sort of translatable it is to sort of the rest of your, the rest of your encounters or the rest of your challenges, the rest of your, you know, um, things moving forward. Um, maybe what, maybe what we should do is, is talk about some, some real life goalies. Uh, we've got an NHL season about ready to start uh, coming up next week. Are there, are there any, uh, is there anyone in particular you're wanting to follow or are there any uh, with all the movement that we've seen over the past, uh, this past summer with so many goalies on the move, are there any in particular that you're looking at and, and uh, really curious to see what'll happen there? I, I'm just interested to see what, what'll happen when things kind of roll out. Once the season gets started, I saw that Michael Hutchison just got put on waivers there with, with yeah. the lead. You, you, you saw that. And, uh, you know, so some teams, some goalies have traded teams and, you know, mm -hmm. you got, you got the, yeah, you know, Montembeau went to, went to Montreal from Florida. That was another one. Yeah. So you'll see the third goalie shuffle start to happen now. And I think it will be an, I think it will be an important thing to see because such a condensed schedule, you're going to see yeah. a lot of, you're probably going to see a lot of guys needing those extra rest days. And this was something I, I spoke to another, another guest about how you won't have a taxi squad of a third goalie that you can just put on the ice. You know, that, that has to come from a guy who's on the roster or someone who would need to be called up and you won't have that luxury. So maybe a guy like a Hutchinson who, Hey, he has to clear waivers to go to the American league. Like everybody knows, you know, Mrazek and Campbell number one and two or one a and one B, but yeah, but if you, are missing that guy and suddenly you need that you need that backup slot filled you know and you need someone to carry the water so to speak you you may not have that guy if all of a sudden you lose him yeah no it, exactly exactly and there's there's a lot of good goalies that like i don't what, what, one of my clients right now he's still not under contract yet is uh zane mcintyre he was an all-star in the american hockey league last mm -hmm. year still not signed He's, he could have gone to Europe, but he's going to stick it out over here in North America and kind of wait until things unravel and stuff like that. But yeah, 
has to Jesus. kind of you have he to kind of find player. find a spot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was the best goalie in the Flyers organization last year as far as performance goes. Yeah. Never, never because of his contract, he just never never got a shot there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, oh, it'll be uh, interesting to see. I mean, they've they've got one good young goalie uh, already, obviously in Carter Hart. He's he's already an established guy, but but yeah, for McIntyre, you'll will, it'll be interesting to follow. Hopefully, he can you know continue on with the year that he did have did have mm-hmm. last year, and then he'll he'll become a recognizable name. Uh, hopefully, in the in the years to come. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. I think you're going to see some good things. How's your How's your other buddy? I think it's uh, Dylan Ferguson. I think he's another guy that you've worked a lot with in the past. Yeah, for Fer, Ferg's doing well. Ferg's doing well. He won um, last year, so it was his second year pro. Yeah, I believe. And uh, so he ended up. To, they wanted him to get some playing time in. Yeah, and so they they sent him to Fort Wayne in the East Coast League. Yeah, he played phenomenal. He he led them to a championship won the uh the kelly cup i believe you called so had a phenomenal season and so i think he's looking to do the same thing in the american hockey league and get a shot back you know at the national hockey league at some point and who knows with vegas with what what's happening there and uh you know it, it's it's uh it was shocking to see uh those tweets from uh from from oh, robin, robin leonard but i saw yeah. i saw i saw his interview after and uh it looked like he was hurting like he was like like those those tweets look i was like when i saw them i'm like whoa whoa what's what's he thinking but then when you when you hear him it's like it sounded like they were they were coming from a good place yes as far as his intentions go and it sounded like he was hurting at the time when yeah. he when he sent them but uh yeah that was that was interesting i th- i think that I think Robin Leonard is a complicated individual. I think he has been for a long time and he's done a lot of work on himself. Um, when I see, when I see the types of the types of things that he was saying and not, not just, not just specific to what he was saying, but how he was saying them. And it, and I mean, it's Twitter, so you can only, you can only speak in so many characters at a time, but it was, it was sort of like a, a hit one hit after another, after another, and it, it's almost like, okay, like I know he wants to get this message out. I know he's got something to say, but there's clearly something, something there that's really got him fired up and it's all starting. It's now sort of coming out, you know? So we'll see. I remember he had, he had a similar, um, uh, I don't want to, you know, I think, I guess they kind of call it like a Twitter storm, but he almost had something similar regarding uh, vaccinations when, when players were starting to get them and where he, I guess his interpretation was that the players would all could all be vaccinated and that they would, you know, gain a little bit more freedom from the teams or from the league. And he felt they weren't following through with that. I, I'm not exactly sure how it all turned out, but I think basically the league had said, well, we didn't really promise you anything. What we were saying was like, you know, getting this is sort of the next step in, you know, allowing some things at, at different points to open up. And, and again, I, I think he's had a meeting with, with Gary Bettman and, and hopefully they, they at least address some things because on top of all of the other stuff, what he did talk about, certainly the, the, like the allegations he was raising are pretty serious. And if, if that's something that can't be proven or if that's, you know, something that ends up not being exactly what his interpretation of the things he's heard, I'm guessing from either ex teammates or, or guys he knows, you know, that's something that could really, you know, be a problem for him moving forward too. And, you know, you just, you want to see the guy, you want to see the guy do well. Cause like I said, he's done a lot of work on himself. He's, 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 he's talked about the types of, you know, problems he's had and he followed it up with a master in trophy performance and uh, for the, for the work he's done. And now, now he has the net in Vegas and, and it's, you know, hopefully it's, it's something where he can turn everything, you know, into that positive uh, that outcome that we're all looking for. So we'll, we'll see what goes on. I, I think, I think what I'm, what I'm looking forward to is, you know, who are the goalies who went from one situation to another and does that translate to the same success they had? I look at Peter Morazic, who 
who by all his measurables had a fantastic year with Carolina. Can he carry that forward in Toronto for what would have been, I, I guess, considered a down year for Frederick Anderson, who signed in the opposite direction, moving into, I don't want to, I don't want to say like a, a more structured system, but you know, a Rod Brindamore coach team, does that end up making him, have a bit of a turnaround or does that allow him to just focus on the saves and, and uh, sort of maybe be out of the spotlight and maybe be in a, in a comfort zone. And, and then you've got a couple of younger goalies, the, the, Nadel, the Nadelkovich uh, situation moving to Detroit, or you've got does Spencer Knight take over in Florida. Does Chris Dreger, how does, how well does he do uh, in, in Seattle with the crack and he'll be playing, mostly behind Grubauer, but, but after the year he had in Florida. So I think it's going to be a a fantastic year for goalies. If not, because maybe they're going to be a little tired, but it'll be interesting to see who, who sort of grabs the ring, so to speak, who really sort of kind of steps to the forefront now that we're back to a, a normal season where it's going to be full games. Most rinks are going to have uh, full capacity fans. And I, I, I do really think it will be, it will be pretty exciting to, uh, it will be pretty, uh, pretty exciting to see, you know. Who, uh, are, there, are there like two teams that aren't full capacity? Is that it? Yeah, I guess it's, it's much, is it, is it Vancouver? Is it you guys out West? I think Vancouver is probably one of them. So I'm, I'm fortunate enough. I'm actually splitting season tickets with someone on the Leafs. So, uh, I'll be at quite a few games and, uh, so, will, so will most of my buddies, uh, and it's going to be full capacity. They're on, they're on the, uh, the, the, you know, you have to show your card that says the proof of, uh, proof of vaccination, which, which only makes sense, you know, um, otherwise it becomes a little, a little bit wild west and, and who knows, you know, like who knows what happens, right? So hopefully we get to a point where, where this thing, and it goes away. Maybe it's not the right word, but hopefully we do get to a point where we don't have to think about it as much or hopefully at all. And, and we just get to go to a hockey game and we don't have to worry about showing ID to, to get into the, you know, just to get into the building and watch, uh, watch the game that we love so much, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, before we start wrapping things up, um, is there anything else that's sort of exciting you or is there anything else, another sort of set of the messages maybe that you want to convey uh, to the goalies out there, to the parents out there, to the coaches out there um, something, uh, something digestible and uh, that allows them to see a bit more into the, into the world of mindset training. Well, I, I think, you know, I see in the, uh, the Facebook groups, there's a lot of parents that are kind of feeling their way through the whole being a, you know, being a, a goalie parent and, and the goaltenders feeling their way through being a youth hockey goaltender. It's not easy, right? The, the, the mm-hmm. position is one of the, the toughest positions and, and sometimes being a goalie parent can be even, even, even tougher. Mm-hmm. I would say, you know, focus, really put the focus on the controllables. There's going to be, you know, you see some, there, there's always politics. It doesn't matter where you go. So, One of the things to recognize, I think, is that it's not just in your organization, it's every organization. Mm -hmm. Sometimes minor hockey or youth hockey can be wrong, so to speak. Yeah. They're they're may not be making the right selections. There is a lot of politics. And and I find I from what I've seen is goalies that when they get say 13, 14, 15. And they decide that, yeah, I want to be a goalie. I, I want to make a career out of this. I want, yeah. I want to go to college. I want to go pro, whatever that is. My, my biggest advice is to really, really give it everything you got and to, to stick it out. Make sure you, 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 know, you are working on the technical. You are working on the, the, the physical. You are working on the mental as well, too. Because if you're not working on all three, it's going to break down somewhere guaranteed. It's, it's like a car that's not getting oil change. Eventually the engine's just going to freeze. Doesn't matter how much air's in the tires. If you don't change the oil. So the controllables are the things that, the things that you're doing, the things you're doing on the ice, 
You can't worry about what another goalie says or does. You can't worry about what another parent says or does. When you're on the ice, you work on stopping that little black thing from getting behind you and, and you can't let the other parts, you can't let the other parts enter your mind. Yes. And, and for example, a lot of times the, the goalies will be like, they'll, they'll, they'll have a game and they're playing on a team that's not very good in the first place. And so they are complaining or their parents are complaining or they go in the car and the parents like, ah, you know, don't worry. The defense didn't do this. The defense didn't do this. Da, 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 da. That to me, that sets the goalie up for failure. Okay. As opposed to just like, Hey, uh, there, there, there's a company out there, I think called train ugly is what it's called. And I was telling okay. the Olympic athletes that I work with today about, about this and, and because they, they were going through some tough times with their training in the, in the Olympics. And, uh, Basically, the whole premise of train ugly is when you train, the more difficult that it is and that the worse that you look, so to speak, the better you're going to get. And so as a goaltender, sometimes you have to look at it like that. And, and if you're playing on a team that is super bad, so to speak, you can become super good. Just by, And a, a great example is a guy with Carolina's organization is Beck Warren. Yeah. Right? Beck was not drafted into the Western Hockey League, was not drafted into the National Hockey League, played on Tri-Cities, right? the same junior team that Carey Price played on. Right. And Beck, Tri-Cities, uh, they're, they're a great organization. Their team was not that good that year. Beck broke the single season save record for, for that organization and was phenomenal, even though he was getting 50 shots a night. So they, they would play Everett. They would play like uh, Carter Hart and, and Everett and they would be outshot 65 to 14 and they would lose two to one. Yeah. Beck would just stand on his head, like just phenomenal. And, uh, but here's the thing. It, his focus had to be on what he can control. His focus had to be on, it couldn't be on my defense is not very good. Mm -hmm get so many shots they're always giving the puck away we're taking too many penalties it's got to be on yes we're taking penalties that's opportunity for me yes my defense is, is going to give the puck away well guess what i'm ready for that because how many times you see in the national hockey league where the goalie doesn't make the save but if you really look because it was a giveaway right and so right. Like, well, wait, what do you expect well, if the goalie was expecting it to be given away he's going to be ahead of the play so there's little things like and, and that's a controllable Right. You can't control if your D-man gives the puck away, but you can control if you're ready for your D-man to give the puck away. Right. You're, you're, you're scanning the threats. Because because really, you got to be mentally, the more mentally sharp you are, the better you're going to be as a goaltender when you're out there. And that's when there's breakdowns and when goalies are not mentally sharp and there is a giveaway or the, there's little things and they just take their focus for a second their focus shrinks and then all of a sudden they're, they're not making the save. Right. So, so yeah, just focus on the controllables, whatever the situation that you're in as a goaltender, turn it into a great situation. If you're on a team and you're on that team and you don't get a lot of shots, maybe you get 15 shots a game or 20 shots a game. So sometimes you'll hear people complain because of that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, <clears throat> that's great. Cause you're probably going to have a good average. That's yeah. Right. Have probably good... winning a lot. Yeah. And then when the puck's down the far end and you're not getting very many shots, then what you can do, if you're not getting very many shots, then what you can do is you can basically imagine you're getting the shots and the plays down the far end. That way you still stay sharp. Because remember, one thing that we haven't talked about, the brain doesn't recognize a difference between what's real and what's not real. The subconscious mind does not know the difference. And so if you can imagine yourself that you are getting 50 shots in a game, you can be just as sharp as if you actually are getting 40 or 50 shots in games. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Got some water here before I choke. <laughs> well, Pete, I'll tell you what, uh, I think we've really only just begun to sort of scratch the surface. I, I think, I think what I, what I'll have you do is now let's maybe as we kind of wrap things up, let's maybe, um, you know, let everybody know where they can find you, let everybody know where they can access your program, 
um, yep. give everybody a, a little bit of the, give everybody the Google map. Uh, how do, how do I find you and how do I, how do I get on these programs to help, to help my game? Probably easiest way is just go to petefry.net, P-E-T-E-F-R-Y.net. Remember, .net, not .com. You're a goalie, so .net, petefry.net. <laughs> That's probably the easiest way. Um, the other way is you can go directly to youofmind.com. That's like short for University of Mind, U-O-F-M-I-N-D.com. But petefry.net is probably the best. You can also Google goalie mindset secrets, and it'll take you to the uh, the book on Amazon. Uh, if you want to get that, there, I have a Goalie Mindset Secrets podcast as well, too, and all that good stuff. There's lot, lots of good stuff. Great. Well, Pete, thanks a lot for joining me tonight. Uh, I, I knew I knew uh, instantly as soon as I started doing this that I, I wanted to have you on because I think you're – I think you're one of the people definitely at the forefront of this type of training. It's, I think it's very valuable to certainly to the goalies who are taking advantage of what you have to offer. And uh, I think it's like I even said before, uh, it's t- completely translatable to, to most of the other parts of your life. And I think everybody can get, can get a little bit and take something from it and, and just be, you know, in becoming, you know, who they want to be and getting to where they want to go. So thanks again for joining me today. And I uh, hope I talk to you again soon. Thanks, Dana. Great chat, my friend. We will. Yeah. We'll chat. Great. Thanks.